It is all over the news that SWIFT exempted Russia from its plan. Previously, Iran was also exempted, but why is SWIFT doing this? To understand all this, we will first examine what SWIFT is and what it does. The SWIFT system stands for the Society of Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. It is a secure platform that allows financial institutions to share information about worldwide monetary operations, such as money transfers. While SWIFT does not actually transport money, it serves as a mediator to verify transaction information by providing secure financial messaging services to over 11,000 institutions in over 200 countries. SWIFT is an instant messaging system that notifies users when payments are transferred and received. SWIFT was founded by American and European banks that did not want a single organization building and monopolizing their own system. SWIFT assists its members in conducting safe international transactions and is not meant to take sides in disputes. Now let's move to the problem at hand. Why did SWIFT remove Russia and Iran from the list after Western sanctions? Iran and Russia have connected their interbank communication and transfer systems to help boost trade and financial transactions, as Tehran and Moscow are chafing under Western sanctions. Since the 2018 imposition of U.S. sanctions on Iran after Washington ditched Tehran's 2015 nuclear deal with world powers, the Islamic Republic has been disconnected from the Belgian-based SWIFT Financial Messaging Service, a critical international banking access point. Similar limitations have been slapped on some Russian banks since Moscow invaded Ukraine last year. Iran and Russia have linked interbank communication and transfer systems to help facilitate trade. The official asserted that the new system would link about 700 Russian banks with 106 banks from 13 different countries. It would reduce Iran's need to access the SWIFT financial messaging service, from which Iran has been disconnected since 2018. Since the world powers control SWIFT, they have banned Iran due to its nuclear deal and Russia due to its invasion of Ukraine. How are Iran and Russia strengthening their banking systems according to an international level? Now, you know what has happened with Iran and Russia regarding international banking, but let's look at what they're doing to combat it. Iran and Russia have taken steps to deepen their economic ties and reduce their reliance on Western countries. One such step is the linking of their banking systems, which have been announced and implemented recently. The linking of the banking systems allows for easier transactions between Iranian and Russian businesses, and is seen as a way to circumvent Western sanctions on Iran. Using the sanctions, many Western banks are prohibited from doing business with Iran, making it difficult for Iranian companies to access the international financial system. The linking of the banking systems has faced some challenges. However, one major issue is the lack of common currency between Iran and Russia, which means that transactions must be conducted in other currencies, such as euros or dollars. Another issue is the ongoing threat of new sanctions or other measures from the United States or other Western countries, which could impact the ability of Iranian and Russian businesses to do business with each other. Despite these challenges, Iran and Russia continue to strengthen their economic ties, with the banking system link being just one example. The two countries have also increased their trade and investment ties in the energy, agriculture, and transportation sectors. But, what does it mean for SWIFT's future? SWIFT indeed is one of its kind banking messaging app. Sure, there are alternatives, but on top of the list is where SWIFT dwells. Since all countries come in a circle of SWIFT, exempting a few like Iran and Russia has made a tiny crack in SWIFT dominance. Now, countries are coming up with alternative solutions to replace SWIFT. If this continues, countries may completely shift to other messaging means and leave SWIFT. SWIFT has long been the backbone of international financial transactions, allowing banks and financial institutions worldwide to communicate and transfer funds securely and efficiently. However, alternative networks are being developed as more countries come under sanctions or seek to reduce their reliance on Western-dominated economic systems. The linking of Iran and Russia's banking systems is an example of this trend as it allows them to bypass some of the restrictions imposed by Western countries. This could potentially reduce the reliance of those countries on the SWIFT network. However, it is essential to note that the SWIFT network is still a crucial component of the global financial system and is unlikely to be replaced anytime soon. The network is trusted by financial institutions worldwide and has a strong security and reliability track record. Additionally, many countries continue to use SWIFT for their international transactions including those with close ties to the United States and other Western countries, 
As such, it is unlikely that the linking of Iran and Russia's banking systems will have a significant impact on the future of SWIFT. That being said, the growing trend towards alternative financial networks highlights the need for SWIFT and other financial institutions to remain vigilant and adaptable to changing geopolitical and economic trends. They must continue evolving and innovating to remain relevant and valuable in an increasingly complex and interconnected global financial system. The future of international trade with SWIFT's new development. Let's look at these components, which tells us how SWIFT impacts international trade now that two of the key countries are not a part of it. Number one, enable secure and efficient international transactions. SWIFT provides a safe and efficient platform for financial institutions around the world to communicate and transfer funds. This makes it easier for businesses engaged in international trade to send and receive payments, manage their finances, and track their transactions. Second, facilitates cross-border payments. SWIFT enables cross-border payments to be made in various currencies, which is essential for businesses engaged in global trade. This allows them to settle payments with suppliers, pay for imports, and receive payment for exports. Third, reduces transaction costs. By providing a secure and efficient platform for financial transactions, SWIFT helps to reduce transaction costs for businesses engaged in international trade. This can help to increase trade volumes and make it more accessible to smaller businesses. Number four, inequality in access. While SWIFT provides a platform for international financial transactions, there is inequality in access, with some countries and businesses having more access than others. This can create an uneven playing field in global trade. Number five, helps to manage risk. SWIFT provides a platform for financial institutions to manage risks associated with international trade, including currency and credit risks. This allows businesses to mitigate potential losses and manage their financial exposure. Overall, SWIFT is a crucial component of the global financial system with a few drawbacks, but it plays a significant role in facilitating international trade. However, now that paradigm shift is happening in the world, only time will tell what the future unfolds for SWIFT in countries like Iran and Russia. If you found this video informative and enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button as well. Thank you for watching.